There's a lot of studies on mental health risks associated with uh, magnetic fields. The mental health data is pretty, um, pretty variable. An, inter an exciting effect is, is found in one study. It's hard to replicate. It's not as satisfying a literature as the leukemia literature for somebody who likes satisfying literatures. But there was an interesting study that just came out this year done in Switzerland, published in the American Journal of Epidemiology, a very good journal. It's a pretty well done study. It needs to be replicated. It's the first, the first study like this. But what they found was that if you live in that same hot zone near a power line, you've got double the risk of Alzheimer's and about one and a half times the risk of other forms of senile dementia. And it drops off with distance about like you'd expect for magnetic field effects. Again, I'd like to see this study replicated in more sites by more, by more people. But I think it's a very disturbing study. You know, it's getting harder to remember things already, so I don't need any help from uh, magnetic fields. So, you know, my own kid says to me, well, Dad, why do we need these power lines? And I said, well, they're needed for the nuclear reactors. She says, well, like, why do we need the nuclear reactors? I think she actually said, well, duh, Dad, why do we need nuclear reactors? And it's, it's a reasonable question, and we'll get to that question. But we've sort of been preoccupied with what are our options. We can reroute the lines, but that just puts it through someone else's backyard. And we've got a neighbor here in South Miami who moved his family away from power lines after his wife and his daughter got leukemia. And he said, oh God, don't put him in my backyard again. So you can bury the power lines, and people often ask about that. But the problem is that, that dirt and limestone don't make very good shields of magnetic fields. And so that just usually means you're just standing closer to the power lines. In fact, there's 115 volt K lines, I'm told, running underneath the, the right-of-ways on either side of US-1 now. I didn't realize that, but someone told me that. Um, so burying it doesn't afford you any protection inherently. You can bury it and shield it. There's a very expensive material called mu metal. I use it in my lab to block magnetic fields from transformers. Very expensive stuff, but it does work. And I understand that is an option. However, we're told if you want your neighborhood protected from these fields, you gotta pay to be protected. We're running lines through your neighborhood, but you gotta pay to be protected from us. I don't like the sound of that. That sounds like, um, sounds like blackmail. We're, you know, we're going to put you at risk unless you pay more. So I start asking myself, where, where, what are they putting this stuff in for? They're putting it in for, for nuclear plants, two new nuclear plants down in South Dade. And you know, I wasn't particularly anti-nuclear before, before I started looking into this stuff. I, you know, I, I knew about Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. In fact, I lived near Three Mile Island when it blew. Wasn't happy about it, but I wasn't really upset by it either. Until I began reading. And I'd like to show you what I learned about the history of Turkey Point's management and their success at keeping us safe. So, these are quotes from the Miami Herald. Turkey Point plant needs help, study says. Chronic problems at Florida Power Lights Turkey Point nuclear plant are caused by a history of inadequate management. Turkey Point, worst plant, according to uh, a public citizen. Among the nation's uh, 10 worst, I think they had Turkey Point uh, 3 and 4, the two nuclear reactors listed as 1 and 3, respectively, that year. Trouble Turkey Point, 250, sorry, 2,500 gallons of radioactive water spilled into a canal. NRC charged that Turkey Point is one of the nation's 10 worst nuclear plants. The NRC threatened to close Turkey Point if the situation wasn't improved. This is not encouraging. So how are th that was a while ago. How are things doing now? Well, I'm not happy with what I read these days in the paper. Nuclear plant episodes prompt visit from U.S. watchdog. That's the, the um, I think, the chair of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, they had guards sleeping on duty, guards with firing pins removed from their weapons. Um, we know about the Cubans who arrived, but I'm not really worried about the Cubans arriving, I think. That was pretty comical, but I don't think it was a security risk. Uh, nuclear reactor malfunction forces Turkey Point shutdown. Now that I don't like to read. A rare problem with control rods in the core of nuclear point, no, oh, Turkey Point nuclear reactor. Nuclear waste piling up, FPL seeks rezoning. They've got two million pounds of nuclear waste accumulated. Bothers me in an area that's uh, swept by hurricanes. It also bothers me given in the past they actually had a, a pool overflow. Um, so, I went through the, the Herald archives, I went through the NRC filings, uh, I went through some court filings, and I looked to see what's the history, and I made this nice graphic just to summarize it for you here. So they open up the plants here, and 
the first thing, you know, the, the odd little malfunction, well, you know, you, you start anything new, you've got you to break it in. Well, the break-in period consisted mostly of radiation spills. And this is typically guys leaving uh, valves on, uh, seals breaking on pumps, somebody forgetting to turn off a hose, back siphoning, et cetera. But the gist of it is they spilled a, they spilled a bit of radiation. Um, they got permission from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to put six feet of dirt on top of it, to be accurate, five and a half feet of dirt on top of it, to protect their own workers from the radiation on site. And then things started to get really bad. There's this big spate of malfunctions, of operator mistakes, lots of NRC fines. And I got to say about the NRC fines, when the NRC fines Florida Power and Light, they give them a tiny little fine. Oops. Typically $25,000. The biggest one I saw was $208,000. And you may be wondering what that giant circle is over there on the right. And that's what the state does when they get mad at FPNL. They give them a $25 million fine. No messing around. The NRC, their fines are symbolic. And FPL fights them out of symbolism, not because of the money. They spend more fighting them than they actually get fined. It'd be cheaper to let them go. But they, find them on, they, they fight them on principle. Just like they fought the Goldbergs over the death of their daughter in Pinecrest. So fin finally, the NRC threatens to close Turkey Point. FPL gets serious. They put some money into Turkey Point. They improve management. They improve training. Operations smooth up. They probably fix a lot of stuff too. And, and the malfunctions stop. Now they're still getting sued. In fact, the, the lawsuits pick up. Um, and they have the occasional radiation spill. And then the Nuclear Regulatory Commission decides that uh, these plants that were approved for 40 years shall be approved for another 20 years. The magic wand. Nothing's blown up. Let's give another 20 years to see what happens. Well, you won't, neighbors of mine may remember there was a point when Florida Power and Light decided to cut back on their tree trimming schedule. Tree trimming schedule. Let's try this again. Florida Power and Light cut back on their tree trimming schedule, and they cut back on their power pole maintenance schedule, and they declared a 12% increase in profits. Coincidentally, with that time, starts another spate of problems at Turkey Point. Now, I can't say, I don't have records that show they cut back on maintenance. But the Miami Herald does report that the people there are working long, long weeks, as high as 70-some hours, with sometimes very few hours in between shifts. And the NRC has now said they can't keep doing that. They've reduced the number of hours. Now, FPL didn't reduce the number of hours until they were forced to by the NRC. And I don't see how they can claim that they're looking after our interests or looking after safety if they only do these things when they're forced to. Finally, the last thing that the chair visits the NRC, but the problems have continued into this year, even after that visit. So if you look in the, you know, on the Miami-Dade uh, emergency site, it says, the Turkey Point nuclear power plant's been in safe operation since 1972 with one of the best safety and security records in the nation. Now, one of two things is true. Either the rest of the nation's in serious trouble, <laughs> or someone over at Miami-Dade was coerced into writing something that's not true. So, FPL executives stood in this room trying to convince us that the power lines were safe. And they want to build these, these reactors 17 miles south of here as the wind blows. They want to put power lines about 132 feet from where I'm standing. They want me to pay for it. They want you to pay for it. And I haven't been convinced we need these things. In fact, I've been convinced exactly the opposite. I've been told about water problems, water concerns, and I've got colleagues here who are going to speak about that tonight. The economics are not favoring nuclear power, and we have people who are going to speak about that tonight. And it just doesn't make sense to me. But I think I've said enough. These are, these are some of the references I cited tonight. And um, I'm going to pass it over to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stoddard.